se calhar em alguns jogos houve o detalhe faltou e não tivemos a sorte que merecíamos, mas vejo um crescimento constante por parte da equipa, uma vontade incrível de cada jogador em querer evoluir e, cada, e querer dar o seu máximo para representar o suporte do Benfica. E é com essa vontade que nós estamos nesse momento para acabar a época da melhor forma, para acabar a época e conseguirmos os objetivos que, que temos. Olá, Florentino. António Pedro Carvalho para a RTP. Tendo em conta que, já disse o treinador também, que o campeonato está difícil de conquistar, esta Liga Europa pode ser uma espécie de tábua de salvação da época do Benfica, na sua opinião. Obrigado. Não, não vejo como uma, como uma salvação, mas vejo sim como um, como um objetivo, porque no início da época nós nos propusemos a ir o mais longe possível na Liga Europa e é nesse caminho que nós estamos, estamos nos quartos finais, Estamos mais perto do nosso objetivo, vamos olhar para este jogo para ganhar e para passar para a próxima fase. E ganhar esta competição, claro que seria muito bom, mas temos que ir com calma e estamos focados no jogo da manhã e logo veremos o que acontecerá. Bom dia, Rita Mendonça, TVI. Florentino, como é que se sente? Tem jogado a titular nestes últimos jogos. Há muitos adeptos do Benfica que acham que o Florentino devia ter sido sempre o escolhido para estar no meio-campo ao lado do João Neves. Sente-se mais hum, motivado quando houve adeptos a dizerem isso e, e por ter jogado mais também nos últimos jogos a titular? A minha motivação, é, todos os dias, é igual, porque... De, de manhã, quando entro aqui no Benfica Campos, tento sempre melhorar, consoante aquilo que tinha feito no dia anterior. Portanto, não vejo o facto de estar a jogar mais jogos ultimamente como uma extra motivação e sim como uma responsabilidade desde o início. Claro que agora estou, estou mais contente, estou mais feliz por estar a jogar, mas se estivesse no banco por opção de míster, tinha que estar no banco, porque ele é que sabe os jogadores que têm que ir lá para dentro. Por isso, agora é desfrutar do de um momento e dar o meu melhor para ajudar o Benfica. Olá, coach, uh, live for uh, Benfica TV. Uh, Marseille is very strong at Velodrome. Benfica never lost a game in Europa League in Estádio da Luz. Uh, the home factor will be decisive in these uh, uh, two matches. Yeah, we will see. So I think uh, the statistics uh, from from the past, um, of course, are not uh, so important uh, for me because um, I think each single um, a match is, is different and I think um, what is clear that um, in, on, in this phase of the Europa League in quarter final that all the teams are playing on top level so we got already a first impression yesterday that quarter final is different eh? so also two top games or both teams or all the four teams on, on their best level and that is what we also expect tomorrow from, from Marseille but also from us so I think um, um, we played very well um, the last uh, um, weeks and also the last matches and um, yeah, so that means we are in a good sh sh uh, shape. So physical wise, mentality wise, I think also um, regarding football uh, and, and also the, the individual quality of the players is there and now it's on us to play a very good first, uh, first leg at home that we need a good, good score. Um, is clear, but it's also not new for us to uh, to have this uh, situation. Also, the last two rounds we had um, first at the match at home, and we were able also to play good games uh, at the second leg away. And I think this is the situation right now as well. So we are completely focused on tomorrow to play a very good game, um, to try to get best possible uh, result, and then we we are focused on the second leg. Mr. Schmidt. Hello, uh, Rui Pedro Rocha, Sport TV. Uh, winning the Europa League is the main objective for now for Benfica and who will be the number nine tomorrow? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you say it like it's a fact. No, it's not a fact. So I think we still we will not give up in the championship for sure. Huh? So of course we know that is uh, is difficult and not so much so much uh, so much uh, matches uh, remaining, but um, nevertheless it's possible. Huh? So this is not. Um, that we now stop playing in the championship and completely focus on Europa League. I think the whole season we did in each single competition everything to, to win the competition. Unfortunately, in League Cup and 
uh, in the Tassa de Portugal, we stepped out in, in semi-final. But at the end, we played also in these matches good football, but we were a little bit um, inefficient to, to use, it, use it also for the, for the better result. Um, but that shows already that we try our very best in each single competition. And now the next, next match is Europa League, is quarterfinal. The team worked very hard. Uh, this season to, to qualify for this uh, stage and uh, now is on us to, uh, to completely focus on these two games and uh, uh, to try everything to, uh, to reach the, the semi-final in, uh, in Europa League. It's, I think it's a long time ago that, that Benfica was part of the semi-final in international competition and now it's uh, on us to, to change that. Yeah, we will see. <laughs> Roger Schmidt, bom dia, Rita Mendonça TVI. Apesar do Benfica, na segunda-feira, ter lançado um comunicado a desmentir, queria lhe perguntar se sente incomodado ou, de certa forma, prejudicado por nesta fase final um, da época, se falar tanto uh, do seu substituto, neste caso estou a falar de José Mourinho. Sim, yeah, mas, you know, your, your stories are not my problem. So I will not give a comment on that. Olá, Roger Schmidt. Se me permite, vou-lhe fazer duas questões. Faço a mesma que fiz ao Florentino. Se a Liga Europa, estando o campeonato mais difícil, será uma espécie de tábua de salvação da época. E também sobre uma homenagem que vai acontecer amanhã ao Eriksen, um treinador que passou pelo Benfica. O que é que, o que, é que lhe apraz dizer também sobre essa homenagem? Obrigado. Yeah, of course, Europa League is a big competition. Eh? Of course, we also we love to play Champions League, but if you are not part of Champions League anymore, then of course, also Europa League is a is a top competition. And if you see the teams who are qualified for for a quarter final, uh, then you see um, the value of the competition. And of course, for Benfica to be in this phase of the uh, of season still in the, uh, in international competition is very good and of course we know also if we are playing on our top level the quarter final has not to be the the, the 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 last step in this competition i think it's on us now to uh, use also this opportunity um, and also to use a little bit the experience from last season where we were in quarter final in champions league and we stepped out and i think we we had now a lot of we have now a lot of um, different experiences also with international situations and matches and i think with the shape we have right now and i think could be also very good for the for the rest of the season to, to stay in this competition and um, like i said um, I like to play in tomorrow international because um, I think the two uh, defeats uh, last week they were hard for us uh, because we were very disappointed. We, I still think the team they put a lot of effort in to, to win these games. They were not really lucky in these games, I, but nevertheless the performance was, was good. So, and I think we have to see also this when we prepare us for the rest of the season and especially for the for the um, um, Europa League, um, so and this is in my focus, and I feel also that the team is on the same, on the same, with the same mindset. So I see them, see them uh, after the disappointment after the match, but now already very motivated also for the rest of the season, and especially also for Europa League. Yeah, and of course I, I heard already a lot of uh, things about um, Eriksen, the former trainer of uh, former coach of, of Benfica. Never met him in my life uh, before. Um, but um, everything I heard was was um, very positive. Top top coach, a big big personality in football, and uh, in a very difficult situation uh, of his uh, of his life. And of course, uh, um, he will have uh, also his memories tomorrow when he came into the stadium. And I, I hope he can enjoy this moment. Olá, Roger Schmidt, Felipe Ribeiro para a CMTV. Nos últimos tempos têm surgido algumas críticas em torno do comportamento do Di Mariga em campo. Essas críticas aumentaram um pouco de tom após aquele incidente com o Pedro Gonçalves no Clássico. O Arthur Soares Dias, o árbitro, até disse que ele precisava ter um pouco mais calma. Queria perguntar ao Roger Schmidt como é que analisa o comportamento do Di Maria, se entende que ele de alguma forma se está a ceder ou, por outro lado, se considera que é normal e faz parte do jogo. Obrigado. Yeah, it was a touch in the uh, in the face of uh, Pedro Gonzalez. I don't think it was a hard hit or something to drop down. 
uh, but of course uh, it was uh, it was not not 100% correct but what i see is the big picture the big picture for me is that angel is a is a top football player in the top top shape at the moment he played a great game also on uh, on saturday and also on uh, tuesday um, and also he's a very fair uh, sport uh, footballer huh? and i um, i already said it on, i don't know one or two days uh, two press conferences ago that in my opinion the referees they use him also a little bit to show their their yeah their i don't know their their willingness their 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 status um, because he get not a lot of uh, fouls or whistled huh? so in my opinion there are a lot of fouls this season already, and I see it later on, and you as well. So you see also the TV pictures afterwards. He get already a lot of uh, fouls and not a lot of free kicks. Huh? And so I think it's a little bit in between. Huh? So of course, he can also do some things better and have, has to control also his emotions. That's clear. But I think we have to respect also his uh, career and also him as a player. Huh? And I think he has to get fairness on the pitch. Uh, and then, of course, he is also very fair as a as a footballer and also as a as a human being. So, for me, he's a, he's a, I have no no doubts um, about his personality, about his respect uh, and fairness. That he's emotional is clear, but it's also a strength of him. Huh? He plays with a lot of emotions and a lot of motivation to win games, especially top games like uh, last week. So, for me, he's he's a top player in everything. Olá, Mr. Rito, para o Jornal Record. Um, the league is more difficult now. Are you planning to give more minutes to, to the players who play less, uh, thinking about uh, the next season as well? Can you? Tomorrow? No, no, I have not one uh, single thought about next season at the moment, to be honest. So. Uh, I have even not one single thought about the next match uh, after tomorrow, so I completely focus on each single match. Each single match we try our best to win the game and we need um, the best formation and the best uh, starting 11 for these games. That means not that we always play with the same, because um, yeah, we play tomorrow and then we play on Sunday. We will see how uh, the players recover. Already on Sunday we have to replace players because uh, we have uh, suspensions. And um, I think we need um, um, all the players from the start or from the bench um, to, um, yeah, to play a very good finish of the, of the season. And um, that we have also good players on the bench at the moment is clear, but the players who started the last weeks, they did uh, very well. And of course, these are always very good arguments to, to stay in the team. But for small adjustments are, uh, adjustments are um, always uh, possible. But uh, of course, preparing, preparing um, next season is not in my head. Uh, Michel Garocio from La Marseillaise. Uh, Marseille has a lot of uh, players who are injured. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you think about this case? And the second question, there is a, a problem with a supporter. There, there will be around two or 3,000 Marseille supporters in Lisbon tomorrow. And the club dis decided to cancel the tickets. What, what is your feeling about the, this situation? Thanks a lot. Yeah, of course, that uh, in this phase of the season, you hope that you have all, all the players available, that uh, uh, Marseille has a few injuries. OK, that is a pity for them, but you cannot change that. Nevertheless, in my opinion, they have a very good team on the pitch. Um, and um, yeah, with the fans, so I heard about it. I talked to our president about it, and um, I think um, there's an open issue still because um, um, Marseille they want to want to um, not give the permission to our fans to come next week to the uh, to the match against uh, Olympic, like I understand. And of course, uh, then it's only fair that they also cannot come to to Benfica. I think um, we need also our fans in Marseille. The best is we can go with our fans to Marseille and they can come tomorrow in our stadium. So I think this is, that would be fair. And I hope uh, at the end this is also the solution.
Yeah, so Morad from Football Club de Marseille. Um, to carry on a bit the question, what is your image of uh, OM this year, this season? It's, it had been a bit of a chaotic, uh, chaotic season for, for OM. What do you think of the team, of his strengths? What do you know about it? And if you can just tell us for French what you as a German uh, had felt like that Benfica represents here, uh, how strong is this club, what, it, what does it represent here? Thank you. Well, there's a lot of questions. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, of course, like you said, uh, Olympic this season, now at the moment, I think they are uh, seventh in the, in the um, French league. Still um, possible to, to achieve the international competitions um, so they can, they can save the, the season uh, with a good finish of the season um, in their league. Um, and, of course, they are also still in, in uh, quarterfinal of uh, Europa League. So I think they did well uh, in international football in the group phase and also in the last uh, two rounds. Um, so I think um, it's a team um, who is playing very physical football, um, very active football and of course also with some clear individual quality and uh, key players like Aubameyang for example. Uh, so I know him very well from the, from the German Bundesliga so he's doing very well in, uh, in Marseille and of course the, the game in total is a little bit also um, based on, on his uh, individual quality, but in total, in my opinion, uh, they have a team who makes it difficult for all the other teams to play against them. Uh, so this is my, 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 my um, current uh, opinion about um, their current status, because what happened at the beginning of the season is doesn't care, I don't care about that, because at the end I have to be ready for tomorrow for this match. Um, yeah, you know, I cannot uh, to describe Benfica now in, in, in one minute is difficult. Huh? So um, it's not, you have to be. I heard uh, before I came to Benfica, somebody. Uh, I think I heard that somebody said in the in the past, if you if you want to know Benfica, you have to be part of Benfica. And I think um, this is a little. This is very true. So it's a big big club also from outside, but when you are inside, it's even even bigger. Huh? So it's a lot of emotion, a lot of love, a lot of passion in this club, a lot of football. Um, not only in the in the city, in the whole country. Uh, so it's a it's a big, big, uh, big, big uh, role also in the society of Portugal. And so that's why we do our best tomorrow to play a good game because then we can do we can make a lot of uh, a lot of people happy.